My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UiPath. Today we will see how we can select a date from a date picker in the web browser with UiPath. So we can go to a travel site like this or any other site with a date and we want to alter this departure. So we want to click here, then we want to select a month and a day. And we want to do this dynamically so it doesn't uh, take the 16th of August all the time, but we want to do it dynamically based on some sort of an input. That could be an Excel sheet, a mail, an input dialog or whatever. And then we want to do the same for the return. But the intuition is the same from the depart and the return. So we'll only do the example for the depart, but you can just do the same thing here in the return. It was actually a question I got from the user Ashish Verman. He asked me if I could make a video about selecting a date from a calendar and it uh, needs to be dynamic and it needs to be from a travel site. I thought this was a great idea. Thank you Ashish. So I made this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, just post them in the, um, below the videos or in the discussion session, a section on my channel. But let's get started. Let's create uh, this dynamic date picker thought it was a great case. So first we'll need to attach the browser. Search my activities for an attached browser. Drag this guy in. We will indicate the browser. There'll be uh, this guy here. And then what we need to do here is that first we will, we will click this date here. Then we will select this drop down and then we'll select the day. So let's do that. That is, we will have click activity. So find a click, indicate where you want to click, and we want to click here. We can click these three ribbons here, can edit the selector, and we can see that there's no dynamic part of this click activity. So that's fine. Whatever date is in, we can just click and the selector will work. So now we want to, we have clicked here, and then we want to select a month in this drop down, a month and a year actually. So uh, then we'll go to our activities and we'll find a select item. Drag this guy in and we will indicate where do we want to um, have it. And that is uh, this drop down here. So now it says August 2020, but let's try to change this to maybe May 2020. And we can see that we are able to change this um, month by just changing this variable. And we'll take use of that. So let's try to run this simple workflow. We will click the part and then we'll choose the May month. We'll click here. And now we see that we, let me just go back to the browser, that we chose May. So now we can see that we can change it by just changing the variable. We'll make use of that in a few seconds. But let's first click create uh, the date picker as well here. So there, but, but I don't know, maybe the 14th or whatever. So what we'll do is that we'll have a, another click. So drag in a click. Indicate where you want to go. Just pick a random date, probably the 18th. And what we'll do here is that we can uh, click these three ribbons, and edit the selector, and we can see that there's a dynamic part here. So now we click the 18th, but if we change this, let's try to do that. Uh, to the 24th, then we will change the day actually. So now, and we can even try to change this to December, so that will be Christmas Eve. So now we um, try to run this workflow again. Let's get back to start, run the file, and we should be able to have made a selector that will uh, pick Christmas Eve, and let's see if we done so. And we done so. So now our next mission. Now we get created this. Uh, it will work, but we don't need to change this. We don't want to change this manually every time. So we'll create variables that so that we could uh, change these dynamically um, from a, from an input source. I will just choose a, an input dialog. But we, as I said, we could have taken it from Excel Excel sheet, a mail, or whatever. So let's drag in an input dialog. The title, well, that could be departure. Label, that could be when do you want to depart? And we want that format to be in month, day, year. This is the .NET 
uh, format. And of course, you wouldn't make such an input dialog if it was real, but now in this simple example, uh, it'll be good. So, uh, and then we will store that. So the user will give us an, an input and then we'll store it in this variable over here. So control K and we can say str input like this. So now we are getting a variable in this date time format or in this format at least. And then we want to play a little bit around so we can um, give that variable here in this select item and in this selector here. Uh, so we can change this dynamically. Let's see how that is done. First, we will need to play a little bit around. If you're not familiar with the date time in UiPath, I'll suggest you can watch a tutorial I made about date time. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And otherwise, you can easily just see this. You will understand what I'm doing. So it's not that it's necessarily, but it's just a good a tutorial. Not a good tutorial, but it's a good, yeah, it's a good tutorial if you are not familiar with date time. So before I ramble on, let's uh, find an assign. We will drag this in here. So now we need to extract the, the month. We need to extract that in letters, this December, then the space, and then the year. So we will create a variable here. And we can call this uh, control K, str, month, year, like this. And then we will create an expression. So the value, the value, click the three dots here. You could, of course, also write it in here, but it's a bit more easy. So what we need to do here is that we will take our input string from up here, and then we will uh, work with it in the date time and print it out as a string string again. That's the easiest way to do it. There are other ways, but I think this is the easiest date time and then we'll say pass exact so what we do is that we take this string from up here and then make it into a date time because then we can do easy an easy conversion and then we'll make it back to, uh, to a string so then now we specified our input so that will be uh, str input like this then comma and then we need to specify what uh, format our input is in so uh, the format that's just this uh, month month day day year 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 if your format was with days first like the uk time or the european time then it'll be uh, just day day month month year 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 like this then we will say comma and then uh, let me have the intelligence as well system globalization culture info and again watch the tutorial if you're not familiar with this or you just want to know more about date time so now we converted it to a date time and we want to um, have it out to a string because we would need to work with it as a string down here so uh, to a string and then parentheses and then we can specify in quotation mark what format we want it in and we need uh, um, the year that is easy that is just uh, for wise and then the space but we need to find out how we can print out the, the month in letters and uh, that one is the one that you don't use often so what you can do is that you can go to your browser uh, google.net uh, custom date and time format strings then we'll scroll a little bit down and we can see all the formats that we'll we can choose from here we can f we can see the let me find it here the year here that is that was the four y's and then we need to go up to the month we can see here that the full name of the month that's actually the one that we we are using that's just four big M's. So what we'll do here is that we'll say like this, and then we'll click OK. So now we converted this string to a date time, and then we converted it back to a string in this format. It sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but it's the way to do it. And we can see it. Let me uh, have a message box. Drag this guy in here, and now I'll just print out this str month here. So let's try to run our workflow. I will just run it to the message box Then I will quit it. So we'll just wait for the flow to run. Now the flow run and we need to input a date. So let's pick today's date. The month is the April and it's the 19th, 2020. So it should print out um, April 2020, right? And we'll click OK and it did. So now we can use that in the select item selector down here. Let me stop the workflow. We have no use for it. We will quit this message box. And what we'll do is that we'll just put it in here. So str 
month. Ah, let me get the intelligence. So now we um, have a dynamic part of at least the um, month and year. We could try to run it actually to see that we uh, we act it actually worked. So uh, let's uh, run it. Let's pick another date. Let's take uh, June. So June the 6th and then take uh, the 5th of June and then 2020 like this. So now we run it and it will select. It will select June. And we can see here that we uh, indeed we selected uh, 24th again, and that's because we haven't, uh, we only got the name, we only got the month and the year right, that was June 2020, but we haven't fixed the selector, so it will just be static to the, remember, if we click these three ribbons here, click edit the selector, we can see that it's the 24th. So what we need to do is that we will just create a variable of this syntax and then paste it in this selector here to make it dynamic. So I think the easiest way to do it is copy this, paste it in. So now we got two similar signs. What I'll need to do is I need to delete the name and then come up with another name. So control K, and I'll say str day. That will be my day variable. And we need to fix this a bit, but not much. That's why I copied it. So click the three dots here up in the value. And we want to get the day out. And that's easy because that will just be dd day. So now we, what we do here in the second design is that we will take this date string again, we'll convert it to a date time, and then we'll only get the day out here, like OK. Then we will go down here. We will need to go to the target, go over here in the selector, and what you first need to do is that go to the beginning, type a letter. I know this sounds very strange, but that's how it is. Then click outside of it. It will give you an error, that's okay. Click the three dots, and you need to do it like this. You cannot click the three dots before you typed in a letter here. So uh, then we will delete this letter again. And what we need to do is that we need to change this 24th to make it dynamic. So quotation mark here, inside the single quotation marks, then a plus, and then our input variable, that's uh, str date for this selector, then a space, plus, and a quotation mark. That's it. Now we created our dynamic uh, date picker. We can try to see it to verify that it indeed works. So uh, let us run the file. It will ask us about uh, when it run. It run now. So the month. Let's pick maybe August. So wait, and then the date maybe the tenth, and then the twenty twenty. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That will really help me a lot. And we can see that it actually worked. And now we're done. That's it for today.